goddammit. Hello you, the person who was curious enough to click on this video to know how to create the AC-130 flyby effect using Element 3D from Video Copilot. My name is Brian, and I will be doing the voiceover for this video. So, let's have a brief look at what we're going to be creating, shall we? Holy schmook! Now, the basics of photorealism inside Element 3D, lie within the correct usage of lighting and shading and a good environment map. So therefore I'm assuming this tutorial will be quite short. If not, well, basically. I lied. That was a little bit of robot humor. Pardon me. Now let's get started. First we create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels and let's make it 150 frames long. Import your background image. If you own Jetstrike you can simply pick one from your Jetstrike resources folder. Make it a 3D layer and turn off the accept lights and accept shadows parameters. Then, we create a new camera. The parameters don't really matter for now, just make sure it's a type 2 node camera. And click OK. Then create a new layer, I will call this layer, element, for organizing reasons. But since I'm a robot I shouldn't be worried about this. But I'm assuming that you mortals are not robots. Wait, what? Select your element layer and apply the element effect on it. Go into the element scene setup and pick a good model for your scene in your Jetstrike model pack. Oh, by the way, this might be a good time to note that you need the Jetstrike flight kit. For now, I will use the same model as I used in the original example. Before doing anything, make sure you turn off draft textures and go to your file preferences to set your map size limit to 4K, or higher, to preserve the details. Click the body material and change them to a physical shader. Turn up the reflectivity. Now click the glossiness map and crush the texture, by moving the middle node to the left and slightly pushing the left node to the right. Do the same thing for the reflectivity map. Note that when you are doing this, you keep an eye on your model so that you don't overdo it. Then click on the environment button, and pick a good, high quality environment map. You can go as high as 8K as this is the limit for element 3D. I found that cgskies.com has a load of free environment maps which are very nice. If your reflectivity map becomes saturated after crushing it, just desaturate it with the material settings. Alright, now push the camera all the way to the back, and zoom in, about 6000 pixels. Now select your element layer and create a group null object to adjust the position and rotation of your aircraft. Push your background image far back in Z space and scale it back up. You may want to adjust the rotation to the perspective of your camera if needed. 
Now we're going to animate the camera. For now, I will do a gentle camera movement, but you can go as wild as you want. Alt click the stopwatch for the point of interest of your camera and type the expression, wiggle, open brackets, 4 comma 12, end brackets. Again, you may want to play with these settings, adjusting them to your scene. Ok, before I get into the lighting and shading setup for this video, I will have to caution. All the settings I'm using in this video are all based on the 3D model and the background image I am using. If you use a different background image or a different model, then chances are big your lighting intensity parameters are way off than the one in the video. Also, quick note, the models from Jetstrike have really flat materials, hence why I crushed them at the start of this video. That's also the reason why the intensities of the lights are extremely high. Now let's create a new ambient light, I know. The egghead who made this video picked a point light but it's supposed to be an ambient light. Pick the color for the light, from the overall tone of the background image, in this case it's blue, and set the intensity around 40%. Then create a new point light or parallel light and position it somewhere appropriately, based on your background image. If I look at my background image, I can see some shadows on the mountains. So I will then base my lighting position on those shadows. Turn on the shadows on your element layer in your render settings and make sure they're ray traced shadows for the best quality. If you create soft shadows by turning up the shadow diffusion on your lights settings, make sure you turn up the ray traced shadow samples. Doing so, will obviously slow down the real time rendering, so then you just set the render type to preview. It's located at the bottom of elements interface. You will have to do the same thing for your ambient occlusion. I always create a separate layer for my ambient occlusion to avoid certain errors element 3D gives me. Then again, I always render most of the passes separately. For the ambient occlusion you want to make sure it's ray traced as well. Turn up the samples to around 8 or 10, and set the ray traced ambient occlusion gamma to 4. Last but not least, Set the light influence to 900%.
the eggnog who wrote my script for this video forgot to mention that you need to rotate the propellers as well. Let me fill you in on that for you. You will need to alt click the stopwatch on the propeller option. Jetstrag models have a special interface made where you can easily animate the parts of the airplane. So, then you write the expression, time, times, 9000. This will take care of the animation for the propellers. Either raising or lowering the number obviously fastens or slows the rotation down. That's obviously up to you. Quick tip, instead of typing a random number, you can pick whip the value to a separate expression control you can add from the effects panel and animate the speed of the rotation as it automatically animates. To create the clouds like I did in the original video, you'll have to use either Trap Code Particular or CC Particle World. Just make sure you create big fluffy particles and make them move the opposite direction of your aircraft. Then set the opacity around 8 to 15. This part of the video I will not explain as it speaks for itself. This was just a bit of experimentation, so therefore just record and observe.
And now, some quick tips. If your model looks a bit jagged around the edges, make sure you turn up the multi-sampling, super-sampling and check the enhanced multi-sampling checkbox. All these settings can be found under the rendering tab. If after all of this, the edges of your model still look a bit jagged, you can go to the sampling and aliasing tab, which is located just beneath your super-sampling option, and set the FX. A, a smoothing to either, 1 or 2. I wouldn't recommend going too high, otherwise you will lose detail on your model. That's it. If you follow the steps like I told you to, you may have a similar looking aircraft with a good lighting and shading setup. Now, the aircraft in this tutorial might not look as great as the one in the original, but this is the raw animation, without any color grading. I guess you can say it's like a woman without makeup, right? I didn't say that, the guy who programmed me did. So after you add all your levels, sharpening, curves and saturation effects on it, it will look a lot better. Just make sure you don't overdo it, otherwise it will look fake. One last thing, if you're planning on rendering out separate passes, I recommend using either the PNG sequence or an open EXR sequence. Which one you choose is your choice, but don't forget to set the channel to RGB plus alpha. That is, if the layer has transparency. My name is Brian and I hope you enjoyed and learned from this tutorial. Until next time where I'll show you how to fly this thing without using your arms.